On today's episode of Locked on Lightning, we continue our series on the Atlantic Division foes. Today, we take a look at the Detroit Red Wings. Can they close the gap on the Lightning this year? We'll talk about that and more, but first, let's play that music. Your Locked on Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danku. Thank you for tuning in today's episode uh, and making us your first listen of the day. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for making us your first watch of the day. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the Detroit Red Wings continuing our Atlantic Division foe. Uh, series in which we are looking at all the other teams in the Atlantic Division that the Tampa Bay Lightning have to contend with. Uh, in my opinion, and this might be a little biased, my opinion, one of the toughest divisions in the National Hockey League, if not probably the toughest division uh, that we will see uh, this year. Uh, as over the last couple of years, the Lightning have only really had to contend really and worry about uh, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins here and there, and then most recently the Florida Panthers as they have taken a step forward in recent years in their competitiveness. But now we're starting to see those teams at the back of the pack really start to get it together. And one of those teams is the Detroit Red, Red Wings. Uh, I've spoken on this podcast many times how I, I think that the Red Wings, at least in my opinion, when we look at this division, uh, are the toughest team. You know, their record may not reflect that uh, to a certain extent. Uh, 32, 40, and 10 last year. That comes out to 74 points, uh, finishing sixth in the Atlantic Division for the Red Wings. And in their four games that they played against each other, uh, the Red Wings, well, the Lightning, uh, the Red Wings went 1 1 and 2. Uh, taking four points from the Lightning, uh, giving up 3.75 uh, goals per game uh, and only putting in on an average three. Uh, so, but you could tell the overtimes, uh, those were tough. Those were tough games. Uh, and, and really, that's what it comes down to with this team. And, and that's what has made playing against the Detroit Red Wings uh, in my opinion, so tough over the last couple of years because, you know, there's they're not necessarily going to win these games uh, all the time, all four of them. You know, we're, we're not really going. And at the same time, you know, maybe uh, during the 2020 season, maybe we were looking uh, at the Lightning to, to sweep the season series. But uh, last year wasn't so much the case and neither was the year before. And, and I would probably, if I had to gamble, I would say probably uh, a season split is in the cards for these te two teams. Just because um, the Red Wings aren't necessarily a, a contender this year for a Stanley Cup. I necessarily don't think they're going to be any way near the conversation of, of, of potentially being in the conversation for for winning the division. I mean, crazier things have happened in the past uh, in the National Hockey League. So, you know what? If they are, uh, then then Steve Yeiserman's rebuilding plan uh, is progressing a lot faster than I think we all have anticipated it, and even he has as well. Uh, but if you look at this Red Wings team and you and you list off the names who are on this team, and, and if you want to follow along, go ahead on dailyfaceoff.com and look at the line combos, I have to say, um, you know, I'm reading some of these names, and, you know, most of them obviously are are pretty recogni recognizable uh, to us by now, especially if you've been following the Lightning and, and uh, closely been following what's been going on between these two teams over the past couple of years, as well as, you know, just the, the, the division in, in general. And, and I have to say that, I'm impressed, uh, you know, um, really, like I like I just said a couple of moments ago, um, you know, no easy task when you're playing this Red Wings team, because, you know, even when they haven't been playing the best hockey, you could always guarantee 
there to be a, a very tough game to be had against them, whether it be on the road in Detroit or at home in Tampa at Amelie. Uh, but uh, you look at these players, especially some of the younger names on this team, uh, the Lucas Raymonds, um, the Dominic Kubalik, uh, you know, and then you look at uh, the Oscar Sunquists, uh, the Mort Siders, uh, the names go on, Ali Mata, Philip Kronik, uh, and, and even, you know, the goaltending situation. You have Ninovich. We all know him from his days in Carolina, uh, got moved up to Detroit in which really was if i'm looking at it now and i'm really you know being honest was i i think was very much a surprising move by carolina at that moment in time and, and you know nindelkovich after having a very impressive postseason uh the year prior uh didn't really follow that up in detroit but i think you know there's other factors that you need to put in that are in play there with you know really still this team is still young uh and the players that are not young are are the guys that are kind of, you know, whether, you know, they're still in the middle of their career, a little bit of in a limbo there in Detroit, uh, or guys that are maybe uh, on the way out. Um, and then you look at other players, Lee Huso, there was a lot spoken about him in the offseason. Uh, if you're not following, if you don't know who Billy Huso is, he, he played with St. Louis last year, had a pretty impressive outing there in St. Louis. In my opinion, really thought he should have been the number one goaltender there. Uh, Going forward, uh, with Jordan Bennington not really being able to perform, uh, uh, you know, here and there consistently. So, you know, maybe that's just maybe that's just me being recency biased. But <clears throat> uh, this team from top to bottom right now, uh, very impressive. And, you know, they do have some players that are injured. Jake Wallman, uh, Mark uh, Pizek, uh I think I pronounced that right. Um, but still, a very impressive team. And then obviously the, the, the players that we do know, uh, the, the, the Tyler Bertuzzi's um, and, and Andrew who came over from the Rangers. So, you know, you have a very good team, in my opinion, um, top to bottom. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they look down the middle. Um, and, and that's really where they're going to be able to to make their bread and butter. I mean, every NHL team, you know, if you have Bennerman from the first line down to the fourth, uh, you're going to put yourself in a good position regardless of how your wingers look. Uh, but, you know, those first two lines, like I said, Dylan Larkin, uh, the captain, Andrew Kopp, uh, pretty solid guys, two guys that could also score. So that is something that uh, Lightning are going to have to keep an eye out for. Uh, but you know what? They'll be up to the task with Braden Point down the middle, uh, and I'm sure he'll be flip flopped out of there with Stamkos if those first lines, we, like we spoke about on the previous episode uh, when we spoke about the Bruins, um, right now as it's projected, it looks like Cooch, Stamkos, and Point will be on those on the first line together. Uh, I don't expect that to be a whole season thing, as we all know. John Cooper likes to flip things around from time to time uh, and throughout the course of a game, so. Uh, I wouldn't expect that to be set in stone, uh, but you know that is an all-star line. I would like to see that line out there more times than not. But then again, you got to balance out the other lines. So I wouldn't be surprised if you know one of those guys gets moved down to the first uh, to the second line. Excuse me. So uh, and then the third and fourth line very interesting. You got Pius Suter and Michael Rasm Rasmussen, uh, two guys that you know very talented players. Uh, have a lot of skill, uh, still have things that, that they could work on here from time to time. Uh, I, I think that, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that they have the edge on the Lightning. I think on the Lightning's third line definitely stacks up way better than they do right now, even though they do have Dominic Kubelik and Philip Zadina, uh, two very uh, skilled players. Uh, one of uh, Zadina, who's a very, very uh, tough player, likes to lay big hits, so. Uh, Lightning are going to have to contend with that, uh, but as we all know, the Lightning they they like they do not shy away from being physical, so that is something that also plays in their in their in their favor as well as the the surplus of experience, if you want to call it that. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised in that kind of situation if you see that Kubli Suter Zadina line out there that Corey Perry gets moved up to the third line just to bounce it out, out help out Colton. Uh, 
and and whoever else is on the wing side over there uh, on the left side. So looking at their defensive core, you got Ben Sherat, Mo, Mo Sider. Um, if you followed any hockey last year, uh, you probably would have heard Mo Sider's name be spoken about multiple times. Uh, a superstar in the making, if not one already. Um, but we'll get more into the defensive core I, I and, and just the team as a general, as well as the goaltending situation, uh, because that does warrant a discussion, I think. Uh, even, you know, even regardless how you feel about, you know, goaltenders, uh, whether you, you are more of a fan of the, the second, the second, um, <clears throat> uh, the, the two goalie, uh, situation, or are you more like me, old fashioned, you throw your guy out there for 50 games and that's your guy for the season as well as the playoffs. So we'll talk about that stuff as well. But thus far, I think that, you know, what. This this Detroit team definitely vastly improved from a couple of years ago. Uh, we all know what ZBI, Stevie Eiserman was going to do up there in Detroit. We saw it here with this Lightning team uh, not too long ago. So, uh, you know, he went up there looking to rebuild this team that was very much at the end of its rope in terms of the 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 minor league system as well as at the NHL late. Uh, level. So we'll talk about that stuff as well. But first, I want to talk about today's sponsor, and that is Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens, the best part about this is not is not only that it's lifestyle friendly, it's for everyone, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Uh, this this uh, protein powder is for everyone. I eat it in the I, I I put it in my water in the morning first thing. It's great for gut health. It, it gets me uh, a ton, gives me a ton of energy to start my day. Uh, and the best part about that, especially in today's climate uh, with money, you know, uh, it costs you less than three dollars a day. You're investing in your health. It's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Uh, I'm trying to get away from coffee as much as possible. So you know, uh, this has been amazing for me ready to get my day started with this so and you can too so to make it easy athletic greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash nhl network again that's athleticgreens.com slash nhl network to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance athletic greens so if you're watching on youtube we're just rolling along if you're uh listening to us on spotify or any audio platform you're joining us right back here and you know i just like to thank all of you once again for making us your first listen of the day and, and go ahead don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast follow wherever podcasts are distributed uh audio platform that's uh spotify itunes google play wherever they pump out podcasts we are there and of course, we are on YouTube as well. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a follow on our social media pages at L underscore lightning on Twitter, as well as locked on underscore lightning on Instagram. Give me a follow on Twitter at Danky Dank, D E N K Y D A N K. Love hearing from all of you taking your questions. If you want to tweet to me on Twitter and, and drop a question for the for the future episodes, go ahead. If you want to drop a question question below the youtube channel go ahead and do that as well so continuing our conversation about the detroit red wings a team that admittingly i do not like playing uh, and, and for the reason is, is and i've spoken about this on past episodes whether it be just in general or whenever the lightning do play detroit and really what it comes down to is i feel in my opinion the teams that have nothing to lose are the most dangerous uh, the teams that are not contending for a playoff spot, are not contending for a cup anytime soon. Those are the teams that are going to give you the best go of it throughout the season, that are really going to measure, that you're going to be able to measure up against. Um, they're going to somewhat feel like playoff games and level of intensity. Those teams um, tend to not make many mistakes. Uh, obviously, the good teams don't make many mistakes either. But I felt in a lot of situations, and I think a lot of it also had to do I don't know. It it always seemed like whenever the Lightning ran into the Detroit Red Wings throughout the course of the last couple of years, at least since we've been doing this show, it it it, it seems like the Lightning were always caught in this somewhat of an awkward spot uh, in their schedule, whether they were coming off a, a long road trip or 
they just were not playing well and and the Red Wings were able to take advantage of that just to an extent to where it was they they were able to make things difficult for the Lightning. Uh, there was one game uh, a couple of years ago, I believe, where Lightning got embarrassed five one on national television. It was just not a good look uh, against the against the Red Wings at that point in time. But I I, I feel like if you if you look at all these games though, uh, maybe uh, at least not that one. I I think that the Lightning and I don't want to accuse anyone of not giving a hundred percent out there because you know obviously it's not something you want to do and you know you know that's just not something, but. I, I feel like the lightning, just the energy level. And I've spoken about this in general with not just whenever they play the Red Wings, but teams that I feel that are beneath them in terms of where the lightning are, especially after coming off two straight cups. I feel like the lightning should go into these games against t- lower level tier teams like the Red Wings, teams like like a Arizona Coyotes, uh, um, like at times a Chicago Blackhawks uh, teams that really have no business in terms of making it a closed game uh, like those teams and the lightning should be able to go out, win those games four two four one, maybe if Vasilevsky's feeling frisky that night, three, nothing. Um, I, 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 and we didn't see that in these games against the Red Wings. We really didn't. We, we, for the most part saw very close games, uh, like I stated before, when I was talking about the 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 record last year, two overtime wins for the Lightning, and, and I believe one of those games, if I'm not mistaken, go ahead and drop in the comment below. I will totally, you know, if you've been listening to this show for a while, you know that I, I take full responsibility for any mistakes I may make or do make uh, throughout the course of an episode. But I, I feel like one of those was like a last minute goal. That the Lightning gave up off a, if I'm not, I may have been the Red Wings. It may have been another team, but I'm pretty sure it was the Red Wings. And it was at home. Um, the Lightning did actually give up a goal like 30 seconds left in the game uh, that led to the game going into overtime to tie things up. So it, it, I felt like the Lightning, and, and I think also it has to do is that Steve Yeiserman is building and I feel like GMs do this. I, I mean, why wouldn't you? GMs build teams not only to win, but they also build them to be able to match up against the visual opponents. Because obviously, you know, when your team is progressing to become a good team, uh, you you want to win your division and then you want to become one of the best teams in the conference. And then obviously the goal after that is to you know make it to the conference finals and then Stanley Cup finals and so on and win. And I feel like Steve Geiserman, in a way, thus far, has built this Red Wings team in a way to where it's a very good matchup for Tampa because, you know, when obviously you're looking at possibly being a force to reckon with in the Atlantic Division, you're looking at Florida, you're looking at Boston, you're looking at Toronto, but mainly you're really looking at Tampa. And I'm not just saying that because I'm the host of a Tampa Bay Lightning uh, podcast. I'm saying that because from a hockey perspective, uh, because, you know, without a doubt, every single year until they don't, Tampa is going to be one of the top dogs in this division. And Steve Yeiserman being the architect of a lot of the success that Tampa has had over the last couple of years, uh, knows this roster very well. He knows a lot of the strengths of this team and also a lot of its faults a lot of its weaknesses and he has done a very good job of that i feel in constructing this red wings team and you could see it in the la- in the last couple of years how well the red wings regardless of what names are in the back of those jerseys uh how well the that team has played regardless of if it if it results in wins or losses uh and that is something that i'm going to be interested to see this season uh with this red wings team how are they going to be able to take that next step against the Lightning? And it really starts with the defensive end. It really starts in goal because whenever you talk about the Tampa Bay Lightning, obviously you have to talk about the goaltending situation. You have to talk about the defense defensive court. Uh, you have to talk about how are you going to be able to slow down uh, uh, guys like Nikita Kucherov, like 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 
Steven Stamkos, uh, Braden Point, of course, and and a, the the host of other names on this team that are so capable, I think, uh, and have and are uh, have above average skills in scoring goals. Uh, and and Steve Yeisman has done a f- phenomenal job in constructing this defensive core. I only believe that they're going to get a lot better as the season and as the years go on. Uh, so Ben Sherat, more most cider, Ali Mata, Phil Peronic, uh, Simone Edvinson, and Gustav Lindstrom. Uh, those those top four are, I think, r- as solid as one could get with what Steve Yeisman is trying to accomplish in detroit uh within the budget that he has set for himself i think he is doing a very good job with that so um expect those that top four to be a uh, very tough play against uh and, and expect those guys to be very much in your face uh, uh be in terms of playing defense but as well as uh being able to, to score as well. I mean, Mo Sider, uh, I think, is going to be uh, a Norris tro- Trophy candidate uh, within the next couple of years. Obviously, Kyle McCarr um, is one of those guys that's probably going to win the award uh, over the next probably five to ten years consecutively. Uh, he's that good. But Mo Sider is definitely going to be uh, in the mix as well in that conversation for many years to come. Uh, and then as we're looking at these two teams, like I said, you can't t- talk about the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, without talking about Andre Vasilevsky. And you know, whenever you put, whenever you talk about matchups between Tampa and another team, um, it's very, it is very uh, rare that a team. Uh, there's probably a handful of teams in the league now uh, that are able to, to stack up their goaltender against Vasilevsky and be able to say, we have a good chance to win this game because of so-and-so in net. And this is an interesting study, uh, an interesting case study that's going to be curious to see how it evolves over time. But looking at the goaltending situation for the Detroit Red Wings, uh, Alex Ndelkovich, who, like I stated previously, uh, was acquired from Carolina – uh, last off, uh, two off seasons ago, excuse me. Uh, and then, uh, Billy Huso, uh, who came over from St. Louis this off season and, uh, very interested to see how he is able to carry over the success that he had in St. Louis. Uh, I, I think that Billy Huso, like I stated before, has a lot of upside. Uh, like I said, still, somewhat in the early parts of his career, uh, still developing. Um, and, and when you get, when you have a young player, especially a goaltender that's in a situation, because I spoke about this with Nindelkovic, uh, yeah, Nindelkovic early on, I alluded to this, um, seeing young goaltenders uh, who are still evolving, who are still trying to get a feel for the game, uh, get, get in a groove, uh, putting them in a situation where they're, not necessarily have a good front in front of a uh, good front of defenders and players in front of them. It's hard for them to get and and hard for the spectator to really get a gauge on is this guy good or is it the situation that is in front of him that we see is the issue. Um, and but the thing I could say about these two guys is that they are going to be pains in butts. I can tell you for. for Without a doubt, um, on any night, and, and we kind of see a similar situation like this. I alluded to this uh, in Columbus uh, with Merziklis and Corpusal. Um, you're going to get it no matter who's in the net on any given night. You're going to be getting a very good goaltender who, uh, in my opinion, is going to be able to throw up a donut if, you're, if you don't go out there and play the right way. And and that is why I emphasize so much on this show uh, about the Lightning getting off the good starts, getting on the goaltender, making them work for it early on. Don't let these guys get settled in. And these are the two goaltenders that I think, the last goaltenders in the division, uh, that I really believe that the Lightning should not allow to get comfortable. So it's going to be interesting to see how 
the Lightning will be able to stack up against Detroit. I think when it comes down to it, I think we will see a split. Um, I, I think that we should not really worry about uh, Detroit threatening for that third spot in the division. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're right on the fringe in the last couple of weeks uh, for that last wild card spot. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye out for that uh, as the season progresses. Thankfully, uh, the light, and I say this and I say, thankfully, not in terms of I'm, I'm scared of playing Detroit. It's just like I said earlier, I don't enjoy playing the Red Wings. Um, but thankfully, the Lightning won't be playing Detroit until December 6th. So by then, hopefully Tampa will uh, have gotten the feel for things, gotten on a roll by then. And, and we will see uh, somewhat of a realistic matchup in terms of both teams will have already jumped into the pool and are treading water and are ready to go to swim laps against each other. So uh, in the meantime, please go ahead and subscribe to the pod. Uh, and you know, so you're aware of the updates surrounding the podcast, as well as as we progress towards the regular season, uh, we are continuing our series on the Atlantic Division, and we'll be previewing more. We'll be having guests on the show, of course. Armando Velez of Locked On Plant Panthers will be on at one, some point during this week, so keep an eye out for that. And as always, that's been it for our episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host Adam Danker. I'll talk to you in the next one.